Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Liberation Podcast. In this podcast, we explore how Asians can uh, live lives of freedom and fulfillment, um, doing what we love, uh, despite any limiting cultural beliefs, stereotypes, or life situations that might be in the way. Um, I'm I'm your host. Uh, my name is Lilia Zen, and I've been a life coach for about a year. I love helping people um, find and do the careers they love. And um, yeah, here on the show with us, we have our guest Godwin Chan. Um, he was uh, my high school classmate um, seven <laughs> years ago. And um, oh, you remember how long it was ago? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're old. We're old. <laughs> Yeah, we're growing beards and everything. We're being stages, uh, you know, mid twenties. <laughs> you know, uh, never thought I'd get make it this far. But um, yeah, Godwin's been up to some really cool things, uh, including the Digital Introverts podcast. But I will also uh, turn it over to Godwin to um, introduce himself. Um, sure. I guess like bef- honestly, actually, before we before we begin, um, you know, it's really interesting. You you, you know, you said your name was Lilia Zen. Yeah. <laughs> when, when did you go talk? When did you, when did you take over that uh, that name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because so, that was um, not the name I know I knew you from. <laughs> yeah. So this is like my um, public facing name right now to uh, protect my privacy because lately I've been sharing a lot of personal stuff on Facebook um, to help others, but uh, just in case people. Uh, you know, online creeps or whatever want to follow me, uh, they will not get to my social insurance number. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I guess like for me, my on- intro, honestly, you've uh, covered already kind of a half, you know, one half of it. You know, I am the ho- host of the Digital Introverts podcast. Um, it's a place where I interview, you know, entrepreneurially minded and high performing in- Introverts on how they they've been able to find success and fulfillment in their lives while staying true to their personality. Nice. Uh, I've been doing it for about a year now. Um, it's great, you know, looking to accelerate the you know you know the growth and to hopefully monetize from it, you know, soon. Um, and yeah, I guess like the other half of you know what I'm up to is I am working in a pharmacy right now and so mm-hmm. what that means is that you, you know actually that's what I that's my actual background right you know I, you know in in the school so um you know what I did after high school was uh, I you, you know I went and studied um you know biochemistry and business with a focus on pharmaceuticals so it's like hyper specific right it's, it's very specific kind of area um and uh, you, you know, my, my initial goal as with like, honestly, like the bajillion kids who go to McMaster for life sciences mm-hmm. is to go to med school. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so I try, I, I, I did all that, all that kind of good stuff. Right. With the MCAT, you know, um, got that, you know, near 4.0 GPA, nice. uh, did like 15 billion extracurricular activity, you know, like, you know, the drill, right. Being mm-hmm. an overachiever in those mm-hmm. areas. Right. <laughs> uh, and, 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 you know, I applied twice to, to med school and, the closest I ever got to actually making it in was the uh, final. I was actually on the final waiting list at U of T, like wow. you know, for University University of Toronto, right? For, uh-huh. for for the listeners here, um, yeah, I got let go like two weeks later, but still, like mm-hmm. you know, the waiting list. That's you know, if you think about it, that's pretty uh, impressive in and of itself, right? So it's like mm-hmm. this close to to, nice. to you know getting in, but mm-hmm. uh, you know, after a couple of years, I was like, of not applying and not getting in, I was like do I really want to waste the rest of my twenties, you know, applying for this same thing over and over and over again, um, uh, kind of expecting the same results. And also, you know, by then my interests have changed or, or shifted mm-hmm. as well. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, you, you know, um, you know, stopped pursuing that and, and, you know, past couple of years really have, uh, you know, seen pharmacy uh, mm-hmm. as kind of a viable alternative that, Kind of, kind of combines my interests in in science and business together right in a mm-hmm. way that uh it, it, you know suits suits me best uh i think and so you know i'm you know as of the time of recording i am uh, you know in the middle of application season for pharmacy schools right mm-hmm. um and uh, yeah you know that's one of my kind of you know future goals uh aside from, from the podcast as well um still still early days of course uh, still exploring but uh you know i like uh you know i like doing both the podcast and pharmacy and uh well the double p i guess mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh you know i'm, I'm pursuing both at the moment so um mm-hmm. that was a really randomly way of 
introducing myself, but there you go. <laughs> hey, no, I, I loved it. It was like organic and free flowing. And um, yeah, it, it looks like um, you had some turning points in the middle there and picked up some other interests. Um, that's that's honestly amazing. Well, yeah, you, I, I, you, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, completely different person from high school, by the way. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, like evolved so much, right? Um, and yeah, you know, uh, like for, for me, right, back in grade 12, I, I was thinking, oh, I can't really like handle life sciences or um, medical school because um, it was hard for me to keep up in biology class. So, you know, I the much respect for making it that far in that part of your life. And, you know, also- Yeah, I remember uh, you were very into the sciences too back in high school, right? I, I was, well. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just, I had taken um, <laughs> the Asian six pack in, um, in grade uh, the 12. Dreaded Asian uh, six pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I should, maybe shouldn't have, right? Because, um, you know, yeah, physics yeah. wasn't quite my subject. Um, I was more of a it's chemistry not my, it's person. It's not mine either. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah, like there was a lot to memorize in biology, although it was very interesting. And if, you know, if I would have expected to go through, through it at my own pace then you know yeah, i may like, have taken yeah, that like, route that, that's kind of my relationship with physics too like i like mm -hmm. learning about it conceptually if you ask me to solve physics problems forget <laughs> it <laughs> yeah i can it probably, do, I can probably yeah. do them but like you know not perfectly right yeah <laughs> yeah like it doesn't quite land for me it's like i'm growing like, a boat like a with my dad it's like, yeah. it's, like it's like having a slightly wrong key right uh, yeah like you put it into the doorknob right kind of thing yeah yeah okay <laughs> yeah so um yeah like uh I, i'm curious to hear actually like so you with pharmacy um i think that would also be considered like um you know that something that is uh acceptable is that a asian, asian uh, career <laughs> yeah like an acceptable asian career right um but yeah what, what has you take oh, that on know. and be you know like be happy about it is it because you developed your own interest in it or way of thinking about it because I couldn't stay in my technology job and you know I didn't have yeah, patience I mean, I mean, for tech, that. Tech is, a, tech is a super stereotypical Asian career path too. Yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and part of me knows that you know I was probably missing some personal growth that would have had me you know be um, more happy and fulfilled within that job too like it wasn't perfect right but you know I'm, Fair enough. I'm yeah. curious to hear from you like you know what your stance uh, on that for pharmacy might be. Yeah, that's a great question. So I'll walk you through my thought process that have been developing over the past few years now, right? It's mm -hmm. been a while, right? So, yeah. um, you know, obviously when I started undergrad, uh, you know, went into university, there was just, I mean, I mean, here's the, here's the thing, I, I'll even back up, right? So you remember, you remember university applications back in high school, back in grade 12? Yeah. I mean, people would like pick their programs and whatever. Yeah. Um, for me, like, you know, back then I only had one singular goal of making it to med school. So I, I only applied to life sciences programs mm -hmm. <laughs> in Ontario. Yeah. Like yeah. I, it was so specific, right? <laughs> and, that, and I know like a lot of like the people we knew, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, some of them did pick like, you know, uh, a few different types of programs. Like, you know, mm -hmm. someone, some people would pick like business or finance or accounting or what have you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they would really diversify at least. Like I was like, I was like, <laughs> life science McMaster, health science McMaster, <laughs> life science UFT, life science Waterloo, you know, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, and even just throughout undergrad, it was just that singular focus, med school or bust, med school or bust, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. And here, here's the thing, um, which I kind of appreciated was that I placed the burden of the educational and, and career responsibility upon myself. So my parents mm -hmm. are not are not target parents right mm -hmm. so i'm like thank goodness for that Ooh, first, yes right? <laughs> set, but set, they're like oh you know um you know feel free feel free to do you know do do the things you love mm -hmm. uh you know as long as you can support yourself we're okay with it right kind mm -hmm. of thing so like yeah. support like financially right yeah um and so for me you know i gravitated towards the sciences uh, when i was younger so i was like okay i guess i'm I, you know, and, and also like, you know, I actually, well, I also took the Asian six pack, right? Uh, yeah. But I took, I, I, but I took data, uh, data uh, or data, uh, math 
in grade 11 actually so i mm-hmm. I, I i i did the fat i i fast tracked that in grade 11 but anyways that's good um yeah so i was like okay i guess i'm you know that was my decision making right oh i i guess i'm good at science so this is probably the area that i'm going to be interested in and not only just science in general but you know the the biomedical sciences right mm-hmm. so like, yeah. okay i guess i'm good at this so here you go right you go. <laughs> yeah and so, and so i mean like even for 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 un, you know during undergrad as well right i was just it you know the concepts came nat- came naturally uh you know the the uh you, you know things we're studying were interesting to me um you know the the assignment i mean by no means was it easy but you know it was it was intellectually stimulating enough for me to continue going on right mm-hmm. I was like okay I guess I'm good at this you know I'm good at taking tests exams um yeah. you know I'm good at getting getting high you know high GPA high mark okay I guess I guess this is my area right and mm-hmm. so I was going to continue uh through that mm-hmm. and uh what ended up happening was I went you know and, and I I talked about in the beginning you know I went for the the highly specific uh you know program i, I graduated from yeah. at the time i mean it, it's it's officially called biomedical discovery and commercialization or mm-hmm. bdc for short mm-hmm. um and and i was actually a guinea pig i was part of the first full year cohort of that you know there was oh, so nice. wow. like, <laughs> so uh-huh. like, was, yeah i was kind of risk taker already right kind of yeah thing. but um yeah that program was very specific on uh the you know basically the entire drug discovery process so from mm-hmm. How do how do people you know discover or or you know potential uh, you know potential uh, drug compounds in lab uh, to all the way to how do people you know how do uh, pharmaceutical companies market and sell you know drugs right kind mm-hmm. of thing so we explored a lot of the the obviously the biomedical science is still important but also mm-hmm. you know we did a lot of business mm-hmm. uh, we looked at a lot of business aspects as well you know we took classes on you know, accounting, finance, um, marketing, <laughs> like, you know, all these different types of, of things, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, which is, is still, I, I, you know, obviously, I, I, you know, uh, have had a growing appreciation for, you know, in in, in undergrad. And, and I mean, and also in high school, I was part of DECA, right, in high mm-hmm. school. So I was like, okay, this is, you know, this is kind of interesting kind of thing, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, that's why I did DECA in high school, right? And so, but, uh, you know, in any case, you know, that kind of intersection between um, science and business, you know, has been that, you know, super interesting to, to me, you know, over the past three, four or five years now, especially after leaving school, mm-hmm. um, you, know, you know, I knew right away that this is uh, the area I want to work in or I want to operate in. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, you know, what's funny is that, you know, I, after undergrad at McMaster, I took a one year master's degree um in montreal university of montreal Mm -hmm. and so i was doing i was doing you know research right and and people say you know you know you probably know people who do scientific research right who Mm -hmm. are you know in their master's programs or phd programs things like that um you know i i I did that for you know a year or really eight months and i was like yeah no this isn't for me (laughs) Mm -hmm. you know pure academia isn't for me either right Mm -hmm. um you know for me i just didn't think it was a good fit uh Mm -hmm. You know, for me as well, and so I kind of gradually realized that at, at the same time with uh, with with med school, it's like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> not it's it's, you know, I'm good at it. I know the concepts, kind of thing. Do I really envision myself in the OR, you know, uh, y- you know, day after day for the rest of my life? Not really, right? Kind of thing. Do I ma- envision myself, um, you know, in, in the lab uh, all day every day <laughs> for the rest of my life, right? not really right so mm-hmm. i couldn't visualize it It wasn't always a a natural fit and then mm-hmm. you know obviously i started a huge networking journey also after undergrad so i started started uh leveraging social media like crazy i don't mm-hmm. know if you, you've noticed like especially linkedin like you know oh so yeah you you posted a lot you've been posting for a number of right? years so i'm like i've been yes. like you know uh hyper kind of active on and firing on all cylinders on social media you know for mm-hmm. you know there uh so here's the thing you know i'm not looking to be a social media influencer or whatever <laughs> i hate the word influencer it's so <laughs> like it's so not my style right okay yeah, it's, it's all about um building relationships that's all mm-hmm. what i'm all about and 
I initially started, you know, this networking thing. I used to go to in-person networking events. Remember those were a thing, you know, you yeah. people in person, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was wow. what, uh, in style, a year and a half ago? <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very, very long time ago. <laughs> Relatively speaking, but uh, yeah, no, I was just saying that, uh, you know, I used to do that. I pushed myself to meet new people because, um, you know, at the time finishing undergrad, I was like, man, I just know students. <laughs> I need to, I need to learn what the real world looks like. Right. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. But I, I wanted, I, you know, I was specifically looking for people who are, you know, also in the same place, you know, early career all mm-hmm. the way to, you know, people who have 10, 20 years of experience, you know, mm-hmm. uh, kind of thing. They, they've walked the walk, talked the talk, uh, mm-hmm. talked the talk and, uh, yeah, you know, did, you know, that's how, you know, leverage, you know, social media, you know, LinkedIn, uh, you know, was kind of my first point, but, uh, now I'm fi- firing on like, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter is a very good networking tool as well. Instagram as well. Um, mm-hmm. Facebook groups are really good too. And then the, 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 there's this newer app called Clubhouse, which I'm, you know, um, really kind of using a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's the, it's the, it's the audio based, uh, you know, social networking site or, or platform. Um, yeah, but in all in all, it's just to build relationships and, you know, uh, I guess like where pharmacy stuff came in was, Oh yeah. So I started working at the pharmacy I work at now, uh, mm-hmm. a couple of years ago. Uh, for me, it was just, I didn't my, have any specific objective other than to say that, oh, I'm getting paid for this internship kind of thing, I guess, you know, mm-hmm. but, you know, quote unquote, right. But, um, you know, I wanted to see if I was going to enjoy it or I was, if I was going to just like the experience, mm-hmm. right. Uh, you know, I, you know, I made the mistake of committing way too early in my life to med yeah. school. So mm-hmm. I wanted to, um, you know, actually experience, you know, on the job training and see if this is kind of the environment I want to operate in. It's like, okay, you know, this is pretty good. Um, and so I was like, okay, you know, and, and also, you know, I keep up with a lot of, uh, a lot of business news, tech news, um, you, you know, uh, you know, funding news as well. Like a lot mm-hmm. of, a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, oh, eventually I was like, biotech, this is the area, <laughs> you know, I am going to operate in, right? Mm, okay. uh, this is you know, super fascinating because not only does it have, um, you know, my, you know, the best of both worlds of my interests in, mm-hmm. in mind or at heart, um, mm-hmm. but it presents a cornucopia of opportunities as well. Mm-hmm. Um, not only, you know, for me e- e- to get my PharmD and get, get my pharmacist license and just, you know, practice at, at, you know, the local store of the hospital, which of course, you know, that's the heart and soul of being a pharmacist, right. Is to, Mm -hmm. is to help patients and and whatnot, but you know, my eventual goal or what I'm kind of, you know, veering towards is, um, you know, is either working at a biotech firm or eventually starting one of my own as -hmm. well. So like, you know, um, you know, I guess I'm, I'm still pretty entrepreneurial at heart. And so, um, you know, (laughs) <laughs> that's eventually where I want to end up. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's the perfect nexus for me. Right. So, you mm-hmm. know, tech business, um, science, right. So, mm-hmm. you know, that, those three crossroads. So mm-hmm. that's a little glimpse into kind of my, my thought process. And mm-hmm. the other thing was I didn't, I didn't try to rush it as well mm-hmm. because if you try to rush your career decisions, it usually doesn't work out well for you. Cause I know, yeah. I, you know, I know a few people who are, you know, who have, or who are going through med school and then realize it's not for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's a little bit too late. You've already committed all the time and, and, and financial resources to pursue. Yeah. That career. yeah. So that's why you have to, you know, think carefully what yeah. there's a huge distinction or difference between what you're good at and what you like to do. You can be good at something, but you don't necessarily, you know, you you're not necessarily want to do it for the rest of your life so yeah that's an important distinction to to recognize but uh yeah that's my journey of how i stumbled upon pharmacy actually Mm, i see yeah it it makes me think like you know um if if it is possible to create sort of like this acceptable practice in the asian community where um we get to take some time uh, you know after you know, high not, school it's, and it's not a jumping. gap year you know yeah a gap year, <laughs> a gap year right like you know, if like, a gap year was an acceptable I norm yeah, i think asians should just you know take more gap years 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, Actually, yeah. The the only I mean, gap I think that's, here. I think, I think that's the that's the thing. I think that's yeah. one great suggestion for for you yeah. know people in 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 the Asian diaspora at least, right? So yeah, uh, just you know normalize that yeah. that behavior that action uh, because yeah. if you think about it at the end of high school. No one really knows what they're doing. <laughs> That's <laughs> Honestly, true, yeah. Right? Like, you, you know, you're asking these 17, 18 year old kids to commit to a, you know, a university program uh-huh. or, or a college program or whatever, right? Yeah. That, you know, you're, you're predestin- predestining them to this type of career, this type of area, right? Mm-hmm. So having a gap year to figure things out, I think is, you know, super important and yeah. not a waste of time, <laughs> yeah. as, as some people would say, right? <laughs> Yeah, because like um, the the one gap year I've taken since seven years ago is last year to this year. <laughs> you know, doing this, basically doing this business and spending time how I'd like to spend it. Um, right, um, addressing mental health concerns as well. But yeah, yeah, like, you know, having people take a gap year and, um, and like maybe a more effective... Uh, I don't know, careers class, right? Well, careers class um, did point me, you know, it did give me some hints as to like what my personality was, right? But of course, being Wait, you Asian- you thought careers class useful? <laughs> <laughs> I actually kind of did in a okay, sense, that's, like the- That's cool, yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't the, remember the, anything. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what I remember well, was- Well, that, that, that was also because I took it in a summer school, but anyway. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. Yeah, I guess the quality really does vary depending on- Who's teaching? Um, but yeah, that's when I first took the Myers Briggs personality test. Uh, I guess I'm one of those people whose personality hasn't fundamentally changed. Like, you know, maybe I've become like an ambivert or like a you know structured one day, spontaneous the other day kind of person. But like the other stuff has stayed the same. And um, uh, the recommended careers there, uh, you know, yeah, what do they include, recommend to you? Yeah, like. Technology might have been one of the recommended careers, okay. but actually it was overwhelmingly like, you know, social worker, coach, counselor, that kind of stuff, which is what I'm doing now. You uh, know? I mean, I mean, how is it, looking back retrospectively, that must have been a big hint, right? So. Yeah, well, I was also confused because it did signal a lot of medical professions too. I was oh, like, that, oh that, yeah, that is, that is yeah. true too. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, um, and biology class was really stressful stressful for me, so I didn't take it, but um, it, you know, I didn't continue down that path, but yep. you know, yeah, like it, it's like, no, even knowing that, right. The, the pressure to follow the Asian route kind of overrode everything. Um, and, and, uh, I spoke with another person who experienced the same thing. So, uh, yeah, but if there was that, there was this one careers class I took when I was in university and that was actually quite helpful. Like for that one, we were basically, you know, uh, picking, you know, three to six career choices that kind of appeal to us after doing a bunch of assessment, uh, uh, yeah, assessments yeah, yeah, and quizzes and stuff. Whatever, yeah, right. yeah, exactly. And then we like, you know, evaluated on a chart or a matrix based on our values, like, you know, what we're looking for. Could It could include money, right? Some people value money. Well, yeah, than no, others. You, know, you know, here's, here's <laughs> the thing, you know, you can think however vain you think, you know, people are, I mean, money is important <laughs> it is important it's not wrong to want it yeah it's not it's not wrong to you know command a, a higher salary or, or standard living or whatever yeah right? yeah it's uh, it can be very useful and um yeah uh yeah i'm curious to hear like what what was it about um uh entrepreneurship and biotech that appealed so much to you <laughs> I guess that that intersection in, in, in particular, I think, um, just the ability of these companies to make an outsized impact, uh, mm-hmm. you, you know, on the world, and the fact that, uh, you, you know, biotech in general, and you know, the associated associated like med tech, health tech, you know, all these all these things are very similar, right? You know, mm-hmm. uh, pharma and and, and 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 things like that is that it's pretty much essential, <laughs> right? We need to, we need to push, you know, on the, on the boundaries of, of, uh, of science, healthcare, um, you know, things like that. How can we help, you know, Im- 
you know, uh, keep the status quo, not only that, but also improve on it. How can we improve mm-hmm. access and quality of care? Mm-hmm. You know, how can we, you know, save our planet from destruction, <laughs> from climate change, you know, yeah. all these different, different existential problems, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I think even if people are listening 100, 200, thousand years later you know hi to people who are listening in 3000 you know the year 3000 but yeah um, <laughs> uh, but you know people will still have uh you know unless we become all cyborgs or, or whatever <laughs> we'll still have our fundamentally human problem we'll still, disease will still exist um you know pandemics will probably continue to happen <laughs> yeah right? there right. might be even you know a bigger and stronger pandemic than covid in the future mm-hmm. right? yeah we never know be prepared for that yeah. um you know things like that. So mm-hmm. that kind of ability to, to make an impact that way, I think is super, mm-hmm. uh, you know, important. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess the other thing is also there is, there is a lot of uh, financial value that can be derived uh, mm-hmm. from it as well. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of, there's a lot of um, angel and venture capital money going into, in, in, into biotech startups currently, and mm-hmm. it'll probably only continue to to increase in the future also because mm-hmm. there are a lot of fundamental problems we're looking to solve and biotech is a very capital intensive industry as well mm-hmm. right you, you need a lot of money up front just to do the fundamental research to discover something new mm-hmm. right kind of thing with no guarantee of of, of its success at all right oh, wow. so it, it's different from other um other startup models where you know you just get users um mm-hmm. you know and, and 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 raise a bunch of money kind of thing right mm-hmm. um you know it's it, you know in the beginning you you're you're just it's like it's like setting money on fire and yeah. hopefully hopefully you know <laughs> you can find something in in the rubble kind of thing right <laughs> so yeah <laughs> it is what it is but uh but then you know you know in that uh it, you know it can uh, kind of provide you know for a lot of people who are working in the industry a pretty good quality of life as well mm-hmm. right and the other thing, the other thing is also to dispel all the, uh, one of the other things I'm very passionate about is sign is scientific literacy as well. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> as we've seen with COVID, um, <laughs> scientific literacy is a huge problem. <laughs> you know, uh, no, Bill Gates does, is not implanting, you know, microchips in your vaccine. Okay. <laughs> like, you know, and those vaccines are not going to cause autism. That's, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Come on, <laughs> right? You no, know, so what that is is something I want to work in as well, right? How do we, you know, beef up the scientific literacy of, you know, the general public and in obviously in a, in a non threatening, intimidating way, right? Yeah. It's not going to help. So it, it, you're not going to help an anti vaxxer change their mind if you're going to, if you're, you're, you're going to say, you know, you, your take is stupid or whatever, right? They're just going to double down on their current beliefs, right? They're just going to shout out, shout out the, the opposing viewpoints, right? And yeah. go deeper into their conspiracy theories or whatever. Right? Yeah. You have to, you know, approach, approach others from a place of love and a place of, you know, understanding, um, not of their beliefs, but just, you know, where they might be coming from. Because, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, inaccuracies with scientific, you know, knowledge, information, um, mm-hmm. you know, news, things like that comes mm-hmm. from a place of fear uh, mm-hmm. a lot of the time, right? Fear of the unknown, fear of uh, just distrust of authority. That's the mm-hmm. other thing as well. It, yeah. That is really important. Um, and then also, you know, we must acknowledge the fact that the medical community, the, the, the you know, health authorities have done some really atrocious things in the past, mm-hmm. right, too. To people if we think about you know the tuskegee syphilis experiment um mm. the all the experiments with lsd on, on general population oh. uh, really really bad uh human just human experiments in in and war crimes right during the world war ii years and era like mm. the, no wonder people you know just you know uh don't trust you know uh you, you know things that that you know people in in, in place of authority are, are are speaking and so generally mm. there's it's such a multi-faceted, um, you mm-hmm. know, layers and layers of, 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 on top of problems. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, obviously, we'll take generations and millennia and eons to to mm-hmm. to, e- to even attempt to solve. Mm-hmm. But you know, we must uh, you know make make forward movement however we can. And mm-hmm. so, I'll give you a pr- prime example of, of a particularly hard problem that we're trying to solve in in 
in, in, in biotech and, in, in, you know, in health tech in general, um, mm -hmm. how to cure Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, with a, with a, with an easy, just with a simple, with a sing single drug, you know, how much, you know, how much money has been and resources and, and time has been spent on doing that endeavor. Mm -hmm. We spent billions, hundreds of billions of dollars in, you know, and, and, you know, thousands of people have worked on this problem for so many years. Um, and it's still such a challenge, right? Obviously, there's still a lot of clinical trials, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with, with candidate drugs and things like that. Mm -hmm. The main thing is, you know, how do we cross the blood brain, brain barrier? How do we, um, you, you know, reverse the, the, the deleterious kind of effects of Alzheimer's and dementia and, mm -hmm. you know, on the human brain, um, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And Alzheimer's is, is going to continue to be a huge problem because more and more people are going to get it, uh, you, you know, um, you know, as, especially as our, um, you know, the, the population, you know, we have a lot more, you know, you know, uh, people who are getting older, right. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Aging populations are, yeah. our baby boomers are retired, yeah. right. Kind of thing. So anyways, that's a long winded way of saying that there's multiple different ways of making an impact in, 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 you know, in, in biotech and in pharmacy, um, mm -hmm. you just have to find your area, which you're, you're, you're really interested in. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like there's a lot going on and it's a very uh, important field. Um, yeah, so, you know, and sound like also like that intellectual challenge was something you were looking forward to. Um, yeah, that, your, yeah, yeah, I'm a nerd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I can relate to that because it's like, um, that's what got me interested in cybersecurity and what, where I fell off the rails is in the operational work. It was like, I was okay. like, it's like, yeah, I'm watching a presentation about a security tool, but I'm falling asleep. Why am I falling asleep? Oh, maybe because I'm not that much a fan of uh, uh, finding out how the knobs and buttons work. Um, right. Oh, how you do know, we, how of do... a computer, you know, <laughs> of yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of how, a program. <laughs> yeah. And how do we, you know, you know, in particular kind of the, the uh, you know, stop you know, cyber attacks or things like that. Right? Yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, you know, as long as I don't have to touch the technology, I might like it, you know? I mean, that's a big thing, gap, right? a lot of, Yeah, yeah, here's the thing, right? A lot of people like a lot of things at, at a high level, but if yeah. you go like deep into the nitty gritty of things, yeah. um, you know, people are like me sometimes turned off. Like that's my relationship with programming, for example, or, uh -huh. you know, yeah. comp side, right? Computer science. Yeah. Like I've done, I've done basic HTML and, and Python back in my day, right? Yeah. But Mm -hmm. If you ask me to, you know, build a, you know, build a, build an app or whatever, I'm like, yeah. forget it. There, there's probably people who are much better at me who can learn yeah. quicker than me right, <laughs> doing that, right? But I still yeah. enjoy using apps, right? Kind of thing. Yeah, it's like yeah. Same, it's like <laughs> with cybersecurity, right? I like, yeah. I like learning about the, you know, the the impacts of, you know, the the solar winds hack and, you mm -hmm. know, the water prior attacks and and things yeah. like that, and and what that means in the broader scope of just cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. you know, of nation states in general yeah and i think that's a that's a really fascinating place to me but oh, you, yeah. me, you know the day-to-day -day, like how how do we prepare you know prevent ddos attacks i'm like i can't answer you on that <laughs> yeah oh configure firewall a b c you know <laughs> or oh, chase down a bunch of people um to get their work done oh a bunch of people in the it department yeah no i'm not really like a police woman you know i'm not like i'm not good <laughs> at accountability i'm a bit you know on the gent gentler side so that was another part of it, but yeah, um, yeah, I'm sure like personal growth could probably help to cover some of those gaps if I ever, ever want to go back, uh, but not at the moment, you know, <laughs> but not at the moment I want to you know, just like uh, keep my two feet where they are right now. Um, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, there's something I wanted to uh, ask about. Um, it was, uh, it's in the back of my mind. Oh yeah, yeah, that phase where you kind of um, went out and met a lot of people and talked to a lot of people, um, right? Because uh, I, I know you had once mentioned in a previous talk that um, a lot of these people were non-Asian, right? Like you weren't like, you know, restricted to the Asian community for, you know, oh. various reasons, <laughs> oh, right? This is, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is a good discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Discussion yeah. You know, how did, how did like, you know, reaching outside the Asian community um, expand your worldview and what, what kinds of things did you discover along the way? 
Okay, so here's the, here's the thing. First of all, you know, I was born and raised in Mississauga, right here in Canada, mm -hmm. and so it's always been, you know, I've always been, you know, surrounded by by multi multiculturalism, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. so uh, that was never really uh, foreign to me or foreign concept. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the only times when I was really in environments where it was all, you know, or mostly just Asian people or mm -hmm. you know Chinese in particular. Obviously, that's yeah. my background. Is either Saturday school for Mandarin mm -hmm. or, sun, or, or or Sunday church uh -huh. <laughs> or um, I think that's it really you know the oh, weekend okay. activities were really just you know the time when I spent a lot of time with you know other Asian people right uh -huh. I mean like there wasn't even that many uh, I I you know Asian peers or whoever I mean we had mm -hmm. some like in primary school and middle school it wasn't until we got to high school <laughs> that was when you know the population skewed more a little bit more towards <laughs> a, lot more. More, a lot more asians like for me right so mm -hmm. and that was kind of a really interesting uh time because mm -hmm. obviously you know we were both part of the you know what they call the enhanced learning program or the gifted i don't still don't know what that means what does getting gifted even mean i still don't understand right so <laughs> but in any case right we, we had that program and you know a lot of asians i guess are are, are flocks that program <laughs> yeah <laughs> Right. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But it, you know, in any case, um, it's just it, you, you know, it's just what it is. And then going off to McMaster for university, I mean, that was super diverse too, right? So mm -hmm. I, I wasn't ever you, you you know completely enclosed in in a majority Asian environment, mm -hmm. save you know Saturday and Sunday right? okay. when I was growing up, right? Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you know, I, I never really, really, you know, thought about uh, kind of my relationship with, uh, you know, being around a lot of Asian people versus being around, you know, a uh, multicultural kind of background because I was really just, you know, it was, there from the beginning. Most, most, it was just mostly in a multicultural background, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you see, like, you know, you know, Mississauga in particular, you know, it's not, I mean, I mean, there are a lot of Asian people. It was actually really skewed towards South Asian people. I don't mm -hmm. know if you noticed, right? It's a lot of, oh, yeah. a lot of people from India and Pakistan and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, places like that. Mm -hmm. So it's not really like, you know, East Asian, right? Kind of yeah. thing. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't come from, you know, freaking Markham. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Where I swear, I swear, you know, that, you know, they can be just, just be called like, you know, <laughs> you know, China, right? <laughs> No, actually, I take that back. That's more like Richmond and BC. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've been there before, too. Lots of Chinese. And, and Vancouver in general. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, no. But so for me, there was never really like a huge difference in there. But I did okay. notice. I mean, we did have this discussion before that, mm -hmm. um, you know, when we whenever we hang around, you know, uh, you know, friends and family who are who are of, of, of Asian descent, um, there's just, mm -hmm. there's always this, just this weird like vibe, this weird competitive mm -hmm. vibe. You know what I mean? <laughs> I never really enjoyed it, right? It's 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 like it's like you know, you know, uh, things like that. It's just yeah, it's just like you know, there's always a there's always a comparison game in place. I'm like, and for me, like I never really liked the comparison game. I'm like, mm -hmm. who who honestly who cares? Like mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't you know I don't care if my if my cousin or 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 whoever is like you know Harvard grad or, or like you know like like laundry list of achievements kind of thing. I'm like uh -huh. good for them. I, I'm you know generally happy for the success, right? Or mm -hmm. whatever. I'm not, I'm just here doing my thing, right? Who cares? Mm -hmm. You know about about so who, you know someone else does. But honestly, that's wanna, that's, that's so good. Yeah, like that's so good because I don't that that mindset doesn't come naturally to me. I am still yeah, like, like, in my like, head. I'm, I'm still paying. I'm probably the like, most, uh, I'm probably the most anti-competitive person out there. Right? Oh, wow. That's I'm, awesome. Right. Like, I'm like, great. Good for you. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm generally, generally happy. Like I don't, I'm not jealous or anything. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. But I feel like a lot of, you know, what happens in the Asian diaspora is that weird sense of, you know, I want to up one up you right? kind of thing. Right. <laughs> I don't like it, right? Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, it, it comes from like a part of it comes from uh, possibly parents who compared us with our neighbors across the street who are uh, doing well, yeah. um, who are working way harder or whatever, right? Like I don't know. I had I had that that was insecurity from seven year old Lilia. Um, but um, yeah, yeah, it's um, so. So like, what do you say, what do you say was like just being, being secure in who you are and your values and your identity that helped you to not have that mindset in the first place or like have that, you know, negative, that competitive mindset in the first place, or was it like something you worked on and practiced and let go of? Eventually? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think I was just never really uh, in ingrained in that type of type of mindset or never really agreed with it right oh, okay uh, mm -hmm. insofar as that you know a lot of people see life as a zero-sum game you know we have mm -hmm. we have clear winners and losers i'm like mm -hmm. why can't we all win together <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, kind of thing, right? yeah so um so that's that's why i came, came you know where it came from mm -hmm. um and this i mean this type of weird uh, competitive undertones also exist within, you know, pre -med, in, within the pre-med community as well, mm, right? Okay. You know, that's kind of, you know, it wasn't until I left McMaster, then I realized that, oh, you know, this kind of existed and it was, it was a little bit toxic actually, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. uh, I never really subscribed to it, but, you know, a lot of other people are like, and that's why, you, you, like, you know, those courses where they have put like peer evaluations into, incorporate that into your final mark or final grade, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have those people who are like, maybe i'll just give this person a little, you know lower lower score you know that, that kind of thing i'm like i never I, you know i never that thought never crossed crossed my mind right to do that okay. to someone right kind of mm. thing right so yeah um yeah so like i just for me it was just not never really came across right um mm -hmm. and so i wasn't I guess I wasn't really stereotypically "quote unquote" Asian. I guess, and not. And hey, not, that's not great. Sense, right? That's great. You know, you, like, because <laughs> I've met people who've had, you know, consciously needed to unlearn that mindset um, and to feel worthy and on par with everyone else. I mean, yeah, um, it comes. It comes from a, a, you know, this this type of thing comes from a lot of insecurity as well, right? So yeah. There's that, and then also yeah. just, um, you, you know, when you have that mindset ingrained in, in you from a very young age it's hard to let go of right i'm sure you know mm -hmm. that's what you you work with on, you work you work with your, your clients on right kind of thing mm -hmm. so yeah. um yeah it's 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 a lot of work but you know trust me at uh i mean and you know not to you know excuse the pun but it's very liberating right so <laughs> oh yeah yeah it, it it really is like you know because it can take up a lot of space in the head and uh, right yeah, a lot there's, of there's, there's so... not a lot there's not a lot of real estate in your head right yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it kind of like I remember you posting on social media like you know uh something about like you know don't not comparing ourselves to other people so it's like yeah even that you know that far back you were thinking about there's no this. there's no there's no need yeah. to everyone is at different points in, in their lives right the only real comparison game you need to do is compare yourself um uh, yeah. you know past you versus current you versus future you yeah. like are you are you improving on yourself day by day are you headed yeah. in the direction you, you enjoy yeah like, that's the only comparison game i play I yeah so. yeah that's that's the only one probably worth playing and um you know uh, uh what is it uh yeah I, i'm also curious to hear like to uh to figure out if like how much of insecurities is like nature versus nurture right that, that's something i don't know the answer to yet right that's but a that's a good some... question i think uh i think a lot of it does come from the environment you're you're raised in so a lot of okay. nurture a lot of nurture yeah i think so um okay like especially if you're i mean it also depends on what type of asian household you grew up in mm -hmm. uh, like for example if you if you did have the the experience of growing up with tiger parents um mm -hmm. it's probably a whole different experience than than someone who had you know non-tiger parents right kind of thing uh -huh. so yeah yeah, my my t my parents are far, far from tiger parents too. Um, but yeah, like they, my mom would 
make comparisons um, between me and kids uh, fairly often and say, oh, you need to improve on this, this, that, you know, like a hundred things. I'm like, ah, not sure. Now I look back and it's like, yeah, I don't think that was realistic. But um, did you ever like, did your parents ever compare you with anybody or, you know, were they actually yeah, I mean, liberal like, minded? It was just um, not not really. It was oh, just, that's great. Oh, it was it was really like oh this is what your cousins are doing this is what your whoever is 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 up to because you, you, you know um actually you know only a third of my family is here is here in 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 the west right canada oh, okay. us kind of, kind of thing uh-huh. like the majority of my family is actually back in china right so okay um, yeah they're like and you know obviously that's a completely different culture that's even foreign to me right when i went back like a few years ago i was like mm-hmm. i was like why are there so many chinese people <laughs> <laughs> It's foreign to me, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and on top of it, they come so from that's because I, regions. I, that's because I'm culturally Canadian, right? Yeah. 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 yeah me too. That's, yeah, that's true too. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's true too. Um, there's there's also yeah, there's also regional differences too. That's right, right? I'm from mm-hmm. you know my my heritage is is from southern China, right? So mm-hmm. so Hong Kong, Macau, Guangzhou. Um, uh-huh. That entire area, Pearl okay. River Delta. Let's just put it that way. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's different from, say, like you know, uh, being in like, you know, the Beijing metro area or whatever, right? So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, the you know my family is from like the southern China as well, like Sichuan, Hunan, um, that oh, okay. area with okay, so with all the west. spicy food. Yeah. <laughs> that was west, all the good spicy food is. Yeah. 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 yeah all the spicy food. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, like back in China, China, I do feel out of place. I'm like, well, first of well, all, I, mean, I think really, slow yeah, and I mean, talk it's really, slow. It's really, yeah, it's really obvious actually to 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 native Chinese people that you're foreign. Yeah, <laughs> Even though you look the same, right? So. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah, like just the way I talk and think, it's slower, and I don't know how to like. I, like I, I remember, and, you know. <laughs> like I remember, like I was like I'm per- I, I think I'm like I'm pretty like. I think I walked like, you know, fairly fast, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, in general. But then I realized I was probably one of the slowest people in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Hong Kong so is fast, a particularly right? uh, fast place. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really, really fast paced, right? So, yeah. 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 It, it also is so like, you know, being Canadian, it's so hot back in China. Oh, yes. I can't yes, that's stand right. it. That's right. You know? like, I cannot stand the humidity. <laughs> we always choose to go back in the summertime. That's not yeah, the that's, best that's, time. That's, for... when, that's when everyone is available to be, right? Yeah. You, yeah. You, you know, land at the airport, you instantly die from, <laughs> from Yeah. The heat. Yeah, like they, they literally, there's like a Chinese saying, like you, you're like an ant on a frying pan. It's like, you know, <laughs> burn, yeah. burn it. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. baby. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going to going back to my earlier question, like um, what did you discover when you um, reached out and connected with so many, um, you know, pe- people you haven't met before on social media and otherwise? Yeah, it's good. It, it uh, really helped broaden my horizons because I was mm-hmm. willing to meet with, you know, uh, people from all, all over the world. Right. And mm-hmm. that is really good because um you know, people from all over have different mindsets, right? And there's yeah. a lot of different perspectives on things. Yeah. And so we need to be able to, to, to speak to these people to, to discover like how life is like in that part of the world, right? Mm-hmm. That kind of, um, yeah. It's just a really fascinating cultural exchange. It doesn't, it can't really happen without, you know, our digital technologies that we have, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine like, you know, physically traveling all, all over the place just to meet one person <laughs> from each place kind of thing. Yeah. Like, you would be broken like five minutes right so uh, yeah. but in any case yeah you know that uh it helps but then one of the un, uh one of the benefits actually of doing that of making you know friends and 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 relationships from people all the world is mm-hmm. you know you have a you have a place to crash at whenever you tra- travel to said country just yeah. saying <laughs> yeah no, that, that's such a good travel tip, actually. It's like... Just make new uh, friends from different places, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially, like, during COVID when, you know, there's not much else to do. It's like, hey, if you meet people all, all around the world, then chances mm-hmm. are when COVID's done, you get to... You, you're you all set, yeah, you want to hang know? out in person, right? You're all set, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And travel groups and all that, you know. Yeah, no, that, 
that, that's that's really cool. It's such a good idea. Um, makes you think, yay! If I if I run another podcast that is like not just Asian, right? Like, how many more people I'll, I'll meet? Um, I don't know. Some people. Well, I mean, some, like, I yeah. think I think I think the niche that you have with this show in particular mm-hmm. is really needed. Uh, it's really mm-hmm. good, right? Um, it's just I think you know, is there there's a lot, there's a lot we can do to, yeah, just normalize. I guess, you know, especially with just more Asian voices speaking about the Asian experience in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's so, it can be so helpful. And then you, you know, it's it's just like, you know, recorded therapy in a sense. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it it truly is. And I'm not a therapist, but hey, it's therapeutic to, you know. Well, yeah, it's therapeutic just talk things out, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I feel feel like, you know, I used to do this a lot too, right? Uh, Just internalize everything. And that's never healthy, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, it's funny because like I, I just reconnected with um, Nico. Um, I, I don't, I don't know if you uh, met Nico back in high school, but um, there's Nico Valen- <sighs> Valenzuela. Um, the name sounds and... so familiar. Oh my god, <laughs> it's been so long ago. I'm drawing a blank. I probably, I probably okay. know his face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. If you want me a picture? I probably know. Yeah, who he is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I, I spoke with him on Tuesday, and um, it was oh, yeah, so interesting. A... Um, oh, really? It, what, to, what happened? Yeah. Because, like, he and I share a lot of similar values when it comes okay. to, you know, deservingness and responsibility and needing to, like, earn our worth, like, you know, work hard um, to feel like we deserve things, right? But he comes from, like... Um, uh, you know, he, his, his childhood was spent more in like financial poverty and mine was like, I was wow. middle-class. So I had like everything handed to me. Um, oh, but, yeah, 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 yeah. but because of that, that difference, right? right. Both of us handled this differently. Right. Yeah. So he, he knew himself as a person who worked hard, partly, you know, cause he had to, but also partly cause he was diligent and, um, well, yeah, and then yeah, he yeah, would, yeah. 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 And, and then like, and then there would be people who, um, uh, you know, people who had everything handed to them, um, the, the, you know, showing off their huge Nike shoe rack and saying, oh, oh yeah, I, the, I the, earned the, this, you know, yeah, when it was the their parents the who gave spoon, them. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Or, or what I like to call trust fund babies, you know? <laughs> trust fund babies. And, and maybe I'm a, maybe I'm a trust fund baby too. I don't know which definition you use, but, you know, I felt extremely guilty because I, uh, well, because of my computer game addiction and all that, like it didn't work as hard as I wanted to. Right. So it was like this constant feeling of being behind and not deserving all of the blessings around me. And, um, that's not be into depression multiple times. (laughs) So uh, those are, those are complicated thoughts. Yeah. 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 Like it, but it was just so interesting to see like, you know, how we both, um, coped with some of the same values. Um, yeah, fair, yeah. fair enough. I mean, I mean, wow. I mean, like, honestly, like I haven't, I haven't, I've barely spoken to anyone outside of yourself, you know, from high school. I don't know. You still keep in contact with people, right. Um, other than Nico, but, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's been, a, it's been quite a, quite a while, but, uh, it's, it's interesting how everyone's paths kind of diverge, but such is life. <laughs> this is what yeah. happens such as life there's like uh well i'm i'm also in touch i was in touch with uh anumita um and oh yeah i know uh, anumita is i think anumita is in med school currently i think yeah so. she's in med school she's uh yeah there's a lot going on there and i know it's crazy um, right now yeah. yeah and um also tracy um tracy oh Tsui. yeah tracy yeah i remember yeah. tracy yeah, yeah. yeah musician um, still doing the music stuff yeah 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 she is although exploring a lot of other interests and stretching herself now too so it's uh pretty cool to see um but yeah you know i it, like each time i reconnect with uh um someone from the woodlands i'm like wow you know this is it's so different you really know cool. uh, you know like a whole, a whole a whole bunch of people from woodlands are now in silicon valley it's it's crazy mm-hmm. like yeah yeah that's what it is they took all the good tech jobs over there 
right? So yeah. <laughs> yeah I swear, well, I I swear to you, like at least like you know, a f a quarter or or a third of like the 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 workforce down there is uh -huh. like water grads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right about that. Um, just yeah. something about Waterloo, um, you know. The, I mean, that's where you went to for undergrad, right? If I remember. Yeah, correctly. that's where I went to, and and you know, I just I just watched everybody else, not everybody else, but a lot of other people go down to Silicon Valley and said, "Have fun, guys," because I wasn't really that keen on doing those intense programming jobs um, or yeah, it, or I, doing those intense, intense you know, uh, technical those interviews. Yeah. yeah, even yeah, it's like a process. Like I've seen people like how to ace your technical interview, how to ace yeah. your, you know, your your your, your whatever. Um, yeah. and like that interviewing process, uh, you know, even for internships is so intense. I'm like, how do you guys manage all these, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah it, it it can be super stressful, and there's like you know high nineties people, um, just like kicking butt doing school and their hobbies, and I'm kind of sitting there like. Hey, if I can pass sixty percent of my programming tests, like you know, the, I'm like good. <laughs> I'm good. If I can resolve sixty percent of the bugs, I get to barely function and crash land. You know, great. You know, hey, at least it works. <laughs> at least it works. Yeah, at least it works. It's like standing on toothpicks, and if a tsunami came, it would definitely not survive. But here you go. You know, that's my assignment. <laughs> yeah. Don't ask me to to code like you know mission critical um you know blow up the world kind of uh you know yeah. programs yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah kind of thing right oh wait yeah. but, but you know by the way i learned how to do this on stack overflow you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah i overflow like i overflow the entire stack and now um now the whole world is piled up with gray goo <laughs> you're welcome everybody <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh man, that's funny. Yeah. It, it reminds me of back uh, back in the grade twelve chemistry lab. Uh, I would make mistakes while pouring stuff into stuff, and you know, I'm like, yeah, you know, you might not want me to like do that very fine tuned stuff because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I can be pretty clumsy, you know. <laughs> oh, let, oh, <laughs> let me like, tell you, Chemi let me tell you, chemistry in in university is like that, but on steroids. Yeah. Oh it's, it's shoot! Crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, glad I didn't go to it. Go into it's good. It I'm like, I'm not, I'm on the, I'm on the, a little bit on the Columbus River side too in the lab. Um, and so, uh -huh. yeah, don't, don't worry, I've been there. <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. I guess we all, <laughs> uh, yeah, it takes uh, practice, I guess. But yeah, it's like Coke and Mentos, you know, like <laughs> all erupt, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, as long as you don't blow anything up, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's like this is a slide with, people, with someone's brain cells on it. Don't mess it up, okay? You know, like I'm like, uh, yeah, we'll see. I guess like not, yeah, I guess like not, part of part of that was, or that was kind of partially also why I stepped away from research too, because I mm -hmm. felt like I wasn't I wasn't that good with uh with with like experiments in the lab, right? Yeah, so, the hands on stuff. Yeah, the hands on stuff. I wasn't particularly good at right so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i'm also yeah i'm more of like a you know ideas and concepts i'm, I'm, a, I'm a thinker yeah I'm yeah. A thinker. <laughs> yeah yeah thinker yeah. writer you know whatever right so that i guess that's why um mm -hmm. you, know, you know we found uh places where we're, we're better fits let's just yes yes um <laughs> Yeah, there's people good at that hands-on stuff more. Um, they can do the job. Um, they make up more percent of the population too, apparently. So. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. That's no, funny. like the doers, like doers, oh, the doers traditionalists, yeah, yeah. operationalists, like those people. Oh, yeah. People like, who that's are like hands -on, easily hands -on, hands -on, yeah, yeah, like was easily 40 to 70 percent of the population, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, they can take those jobs. <laughs> I don't mind. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I know we had um, mentioned before recording um, that it would be cool to talk about just like the diversity of Asians um, across yes. the you know spectrum of um, people, uh, ranging from more Asian to more Western. But there is probably more than one spectrum if you think about it. Probably more like there are. axes I mean, the, the one, and you know and like also, Asian versus other things, right? I mean, like, like I think like just what type of Asian are you? That's what type thing. of Asian are you? Yeah, yeah, because it's like you know. Um, 
as I mentioned, like some Asians, their definition of freedom is to be fully Asian in a racist world. And then like some Asians, their definition of freedom is to completely break free from the Asian culture. And I'm a bit more of this kind of Asian, but not completely because I have, you know, I appreciate some parts about being Asian, right? Like the food I mean, and, the, yeah, you know, fun. the code of honor, you know, the discipline. I mean, I'm not really good at discipline, but yeah, <laughs> fair, I appreciate enough. But like, you know, the, the, I think the, the, the ability to just pick and choose from what, you know, the cultural values that you would like to embody, right? Yeah. And I think for a lot of the Asian diaspora, like we pick and choose from both sides, right? From Asian, mm -hmm. from Western. And we kind of incorporate it into our, our the very fiber of our beings, right? And that's why there's that spectrum, right? And people yeah. who completely reject their 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 Asian identity all the way to, you know, people who, you know, literally got off the plane yesterday, you know, kind of thing. So. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it's it's a pretty interesting um, thought exercise, I think, to like be like okay you know in a in a standard usual human life right you know when might it be best to adopt certain asian values in certain situations and when might it be best to adopt some western values and when might it be best to like throw out both sets of values and just say i'm gonna do something totally different right um <laughs> because uh it, yeah we may all end up following following in somewhere in the middle and maybe not it, maybe it's hard to be either extreme i feel um oh well, yeah it depends on your it, dep it depends on your experience right i mean like mm -hmm. oh i mean here's the other topic or here's here's another dimension that i want to mention as well um yeah. asian adoptees mm -hmm. right I, I i i know quite a few of them now like you know oh, cool. you know chinese chinese adoptees korean adoptees you know people mm -hmm. who are you know you know adopted into into western society right but you know they were obviously born in an asian country mm -hmm. and for them you know identity is a, is a, is super complicated right? mm -hmm. and, and, you know and i've heard you know their stories about you know you know what does it mean like you know i, I grew up you know in a, in a western household but then i look like this you know kind of thing yeah. right? uh -huh. oh yeah like yeah in do adoptees um typically spend the first few years of their life in in their first country before coming or, here and being um, adopted? Um, yeah, it, de it that depends on the person, right? But for, okay. for, for, for most, for most people, it's usually like, you know, somewhere like pretty close at birth, right? That they're, mm -hmm. they're, uh, they're up for adoption kind of thing. Right. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Right. And like, and like they have, they, they like, mm -hmm. they, they don't have a lot of say connection to their, um, e e e you know, to, their culture uh, well that's a, that's their a home culture their they're, they're home home not, their biological they're not, home it's not, it's not home well biological home culture i don't know it's, com <laughs> complicated. it's complicated yeah yeah the yeah i'm that that's a very interesting topic for me too it like i've read um I've read a lot of um fiction books about people or non-fiction books about people reaching out and rediscover like discovering who their par real parents were and all that and completing that aspect oh that's of super yeah that, that those those uh those stories are always super emotional honestly <laughs> yeah mm, yeah yeah like i'm a i'm curious uh whether the adoptees like do they feel like you know maybe they think differently or they they bond differently with their western parents um, or maybe don't bond as much because they look different or you know just feel yeah. off looking different from the people around them that prompts them to then figure out their who, uh, original identity. identity yeah i mean yeah. There, there are aspects of that right and okay you know, unfortunately and i think you know unfortunately what happens is that um you know uh a lot of bullying happens right so mm -hmm. they look different right i mean <laughs> it's just the human condition to do that i guess right yeah very unfortunate and so you know uh that i guess like in whatever kind of uh journey you know these a lot of these these adoptees realize that oh i am different right mm -hmm. but how yeah. am i how am i different right and then mm -hmm. they kind of discover i guess their 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 um their their biological culture right mm -hmm. uh in, in that way 
right? Mm -hmm. So I know, you know, one of my guests who, um, you know, came onto, you know, the digital introverts podcast, he's a Korean adoptee, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, now, like, you know, you know, um, he is really, you know, obviously, you know, he's in the U S but, uh, you know, he's recently really been embracing, you know, Korean culture, learning more about it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, learning how to speak the language, um, you know, the, the food, um, you know, the, the, you know, the music, the shows, you know, all, all the different, you know, kinds of cultural, uh, you know, exports, things like that. Yeah. It's pretty, it's really interesting just to see that discovery process. Yeah. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like losing, or it's like finding a long lost, like, you know, possession <laughs> right? mm-hmm. or is something like that. So it's really interesting. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. It, that kind of reminds me actually of like some stories of uh, Native Americans who um, finally, they, they rediscovered their ancestral roots and then they're like, oh my the, the God, this is where, yeah. 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 Because like they may have been like raised like, um completely western with like no knowledge of their traditions but then suddenly like you know going back to their people and it, and um you know playing the same drums singing the same songs and realizing wow these are my people <laughs> it, like this feeling i mean that, right? that's the, <laughs> it's, it's it's really um surreal feeling right i think yeah right yeah um, i can imagine but- yeah it's very like you know i guess very instinctual and um uh when they and it it makes me also uh think of research that has been done on intergenerational trauma and whatnot it's like um yeah it's like within ourselves we unconsciously may hold a lot of knowledge about the people who came before the, the downs, yes, the traumas, and the ups, too. Um, and, yeah, it's it's quite fascinating how that works. Yeah, no, it is. I mean, I think, honestly, the the the, the, the real or only difference, um, you know, between Asian adoptees and, and us as second generation, you know, people yeah. or, or, or immigrants is that uh, we just had a lot more cultural components in our upbringing than that. Yeah. That's the only difference, really, right? So. Right. Yeah, and and so I guess the experience becomes very different. Like there isn't maybe I don't know. For me, there's still probably a I still feel a need to um, at some point read more about Chinese history um, to understand. Oh, Ch- you know. Ch- Chinese history is so fascinating. I don't know. Oh yeah. Like, me, like, I mean, I'm I I mean I'm a history history geek in general, but Chinese mm-hmm. history, my goodness, mm. it's so interesting. Yeah. It is actually. What are your favorite parts of Chinese history? <laughs> That's a good question, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been thinking about how we all, how did it all start, right? Mm-hmm. Just the, at the very beginning, you think about, you know, um, you know, I look at genealogies and things like that. It's like, mm-hmm. so, you know, what, where, when did, you know, when did the idea of, you know, declaring yourself emperor was the thing? <laughs> <You know? Yeah. laughs> I am now ruler of this entire <laughs> domain, right? and, and I'm going to wear this, wear this piece of metal on my head. You know, uh-huh. like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. or, or wear the, you know, wear the, the, the fancy dragon robes or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> where did the idea come from? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, and how did that, that all start? and that kind of thing right that mm-hmm. always fascinates me and then just going through all the dynasties too um just you know and and how it reflects and you know Ch- i guess ancient china's relationship with the outside world too mm-hmm. right um, you know throughout throughout the generations uh how how rulers and leaders you know and, and you look and actually you learn quite a lot of leadership lessons by looking at world leaders throughout history mm-hmm. you look at you know, you learn a lot from what things they did well, and then especially how they, you know, didn't do so well on things and uh-huh. let their entire kingdoms crumble, you know, kind of, kind of yeah. thing, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that, that is pretty fascinating stuff. And, you know, even you mentioning emperors um, yeah, made me realize, oh, actually, the, probably the social, like, the, the, a very high emphasis on social status in Chinese culture oh, did yeah. did oh, stem yeah. from did stem from back an then. Etiquette. It wasn't an just etiquette. an etiquette. An etiquette too, yeah. yeah. Um it, and it wasn't simply like a Western influence thing. Um 
yeah like like the they didn't come into contact with the western world until like very far along the history right yeah i mean i mean like well i mean there was marco polo but like i, okay. I guess like yeah i guess that's with, so i guess with like i mean with like normalized relations i mean like you know the you know we have the silk road of course but mm -hmm. just i think i think larger scale just western um influence in the region was definitely just the Qing dynasty and later right so oh, okay um, yeah that, that is it's still pretty recent um yeah well, it's, it's fairly recent like within the yeah, past yeah. Like, five, yeah. 500 oh, years, of course right? yeah. That, yeah that's that's recent right yeah recent yeah <laughs> Um, right, you know, when all the European mm -hmm. powers were out, you know, colonizing everyone, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so yeah, where did the heavenly emperor idea come from in the first place? That was my, that was, that's always my, been my, by my thought, right? Because a lot of okay. the historical scholars have said that, you know, the, the first few, you know, you know, emperors that are, that are listed are like fictional or like mm -hmm. legendary, right? Or mm -hmm. whatever, right? And, uh, you know, I, I sound I sound like I'm listening Pokemon, but like you know, like um, <laughs> like the and then it comes to like you know recorded history and and who was you know kind of the first few emperors and things like that. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's like, but you know, it's also an organization on or or um you, you know learning about how to organize a civilization, right, and how to mm -hmm. um, you know how. Yeah how do we congregate in community and work together for a greater good right because in, you know if you think about history before cultures and civilizations began or started people were just living in tribes you know small yeah. like, you know, small groups and communities and pockets of people yeah. but how did the idea of civilization begin like we're going to yeah. you know organize we're going to create society uh mm -hmm. rules laws you know money you know taxation like legal structure like all these different types of things like this is not in, only just an you know ancient china kind of thing this is like world history in general right mm -hmm. how did you know civilizations come, come about you know how did, you know these little you, you know these you know group of ragtag people along the yangtze river was like all right we're gonna create china now <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like um yeah somewhere along those lines uh we can we we probably can find the answer to a question. Oh, you know, why why is China very like, what is it, communal or you know, just very yeah, like, yeah, conformist, yeah, yeah. right? Because it's versus, like, like versus more yeah. kind of individualistic of you know tendencies of the West kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, maybe there were a lot of times in China's history where breaking free from the norm really did not work oh like, it was people. well it was basically social suicide yeah it's social suicide right well, like in terms of like you're, yeah you, you, if you're you're out you're operating outside of the norms you're either mm -hmm. you know executed or you're you're just banished from the community kind of thing right that's mm -hmm. what i would imagine right so that's yeah. why like, that's why you know conforming mm -hmm. uh help to live a longer life <laughs> right so yeah but yeah, there's like this other layer to it where um, breaking free from the norm uh, would probably be perceived as a huge threat to the existing power, which I I'm not sure if that makes sense to me because clearly the emperor has uh, immense power and well, immense unconditional has respect. Has, has absolute power. Yeah, yeah, absolute power. And people respect him almost unconditionally. Um, yeah, that, was, right. that was on par for the course. Like, it was very few people who, well, well, actually, that's a lie. I mean, like, you, you think about all the different like revolutions and things. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, history. I know. Like, clearly, not everyone respected the emperor, right? But, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's like successive emperors did not respect the emperors the, the, from the dynasties before. You know, yeah, from the dynasties before, or the successful emperors, you know, didn't respect the people, and then the people revolted, and that's how we changed dynasties, kind of thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, it's like, it, you know, it's it's amazing how for thousands of years, China just, they ma maintain this uh, system of um, uh, emperor has full say over everything. Everything, basically. yeah. <laughs> right, and, and you know, um, it, like they were, ma they managed to make themselves look very, what is it, um, not fierce, but scary enough to get everybody um, to follow them somehow. I don't know, like well, yeah, when it first I mean, began, like, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, you know, uh, it, throughout history, uh, you know, the, the system of just commanding respect is, is just comes from just one term, 
bigger army diplomacy. Mm. You have the bigger army, you're definitely you're the ultimately automatically the winner here, right? Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I I guess then that um, part of the reason why a dynasty survives so long is because the leadership. Was able to rally and keep well, and get all these the, strong the armies. Of, of yeah, and, and yeah, strong, yeah. Strong, strong armies help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, strong armies under their command, and yeah, you know, very smart people. But yeah, I can imagine intimidating. Right? It's like, oh, just one person at the top. Um, I wonder how they did it. Like before everything, right? It was like a bunch of you know random people on the Yangtze Yen- River. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then one guy is like, "Hey, I have hey, gotten heavenly I'm take, decree. I'm going to yeah, yeah, under under heaven. I'm going to, to uh, now I'll tell you what to do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe I don't know. Maybe there was some kind of uh, I'm not gonna say tsunami because it's Japanese, but like you know something going on. And he was like, "Oh, don't worry. God has or oh, God or oh, heaven has taught me how to how yeah. to lead us all into." Um, abundance whatever. and safety Maybe whatever it was you know so it sounds, it sounds religious actually but yeah yeah, yeah it yeah, probably yeah. was um yeah, yeah and then and then yeah yeah i guess like a stream of random events happening after that that are maybe not so random um but to <laughs> the way things are today <laughs> just like intuition trying to fill in gaps <laughs> yeah yeah no it's yeah. it's just it's just fascinating how we all got got here right i mean like yeah. obviously you know even just most of us don't even know you know beyond our great parent great grandparents like who's you know our ancestors right and what do they do yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing um and yeah. uh i mean like you know i probably i i, I clearly come from somewhere right? <laughs> uh you know within within chinese history and, and you yeah. as well right so yeah yeah, yeah. and um uh, yeah, there's there's a lot I still don't know, and, um, and and yeah, like a question just came up in my head also, like at the beginning of Western civilization, right? You know, how did this whole social status and hierarchy idea come about, and why did people decide that individualism was the uh, was the best way to live? And yeah, you know that that would be pretty cool to learn about too. Yeah, that's that. That is true too. Uh, I mean, although although I will say, it used to be a lot more communal because I mean, it, survival, right, it was yeah. kind of a key thing. But uh, yeah. yeah, as we as we became more abundant, I guess, in resources and and things like that, yeah, no, Western mm-hmm. society did become a lot more individualistic over time. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, when the system changed, then individualism actually—I don't know—maybe created. No, it was really the industrial revolution. Industrial uh, that, revolution, right? That kicked okay. it off, right? People uh, started, you know, started flocking to the cities for work. Uh, they mm-hmm. left their farms behind, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. Right? Yeah. That's when, like, now it's like you know the, the city phenomenon, right? Now we're yeah. a lot more individualistic. We have to survive. We have to look out for ourselves, right? We can't necessarily trust you know, people next door kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, yeah, they may have drugs or a gun or, <laughs> well, that's... Or whatever, yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I know that it's been great, um, great discussion today, um, touched on a lot of different topics, a lot of... Well, I could go on for six more hours, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, the... This, this may not be the last episode that we do, uh, certainly, um, you know, lots more to explore. Um, but yeah, do you have any um, closing thoughts for our audience before we head out? Yeah, honestly, um, honestly, the, 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 the kind of mantra or the thing that I always encourage people with is to just start. I don't care what it is, right? So, mm-hmm. you know, whether, whether whether that's you know your creative hobby, your business idea, um, mm-hmm. you know, telling your parents you don't want to go to med school anymore, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, just just do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, rip the bandaid off. Just <laughs> just do it. You'll feel so much better. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, you, you know by by just you know uh, just by going at it. Um, obviously, in a, do it in a tactful way, right? Just don't mm-hmm. you, you know. I mean, you know. If you're, you know, in your last year of university, you want to, you know, drop out. I'm like, I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say, just finish your degree. <laughs> you're almost there, anyways, right? Kind mm-hmm. of thing. 
Yeah. But you know, if um, you know, you you know, you're really passionate about something, or you really, uh, you, you know, want to pursue it, uh, give yourself permission to do so. Right. Don't mm -hmm. let anyone else say what you can or or, or cannot do. Yeah. You know, um, and just and just go for it. I mean, like the best, I think the best ideas, concepts, companies, things like that have come about uh, strictly because no one, you know, everyone else around them said, no, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And they, they did it anyway, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, were, they were the rebels, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, rebels, you know, oftentimes make for, uh, you know, amazing creatives or, or people who uh, add a lot of value into the world, right? Mm -hmm. So we need a lot more of, of, of those, especially uh, within the Asian community, right? Yeah. Uh, especially, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, thrilled, right, to see that there are so, there, you know, the number of Asian creatives are increasing, you know, uh, a lot, right? And and people who are, you know, you, you know, that we can see that are having successful, successful, thriving careers in non-stereotypical ways, right? Mm -hmm. or, or or career paths, uh, yeah. You know, Boosting representation in the media and the arts mm -hmm. culture, um, yeah. that type of thing. It's 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 you know it's great. You know we can keep it up mm -hmm. uh, and show that you know uh, you know Asians can do anything really <laughs> if they set their yeah. mind to it. Right? So yeah, hundred percent. And yeah, you know just starting um, right. Like I in my experience, a lot of things I was so afraid of, like those fears, didn't really come to pass um it, it always ended up better that turning out better than i expected <laughs> um, much of the time um you know like the world didn't fall apart so yeah thank you so much godwin um this is uh, a great uh, again a great conversation and yeah you know i wish you the best with um digital introverts and uh you know pharmacy and all your pursuits. Well, we'll see where it goes. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. All right. Yeah. And for our audience, um, we'll see you again in the next episode.